In our second video on non-deterministic finite automata, or NFAs, we'll take a careful look at branching in NFAs, making a few important observations along the way, and arriving at a key result, the subset construction. Let sigma be some finite alphabet. Recall that a non-deterministic finite automaton, or NFA, consists of a finite number of states, including a unique start state, and a non-negative number of transitions from each state for each symbol of sigma union the empty string, with some subset of states marked as accept states. In our first look, we define the operation of an NFA via branching. Given an input string x, we start at the start state, then for each symbol of x in sequence follow all corresponding transitions, branching as necessary, and we accept if any branch finishes at an accept state, and reject otherwise. Let's go back to our example NFA from last time and record a full account of the branches that come up for the input string AAABAAB, recording our configurations after each symbol of the input string. We see no branching at all for the first three A's. We split to two branches on the first B, and the states of the branches rotate around on the next two A's. We add a branch again on the last B, giving us three total branches. One of these branches ends at an accept state, so our NFA accepts the string AAABAAB. Remember that it only takes one branch finishing on an accept state for an NFA to accept a string. The non-deterministic finite automaton is our simplest non-deterministic machine, and we'll get lucky in that there's a second, simpler, way to represent non-determinism for NFAs. The key observation is that along each column of states, the different branches of the NFA are all in sync with one another. They all have the same string remaining to be read, and thus they'll follow transitions corresponding to the same sequence of symbols. From first column to second, all branches transition on that first A, all the way down to the last step where all branches transition on a B. The only difference between the configurations of the different branches at each step is which state of the NFA is occupied. Thus, we can record all of this much more concisely if we merge our diagrams in each column into a single diagram of the NFA by allowing ourselves to occupy multiple states at once, one for each branch. We're still talking about the same notion of branching, just representing all of our branches at once on a single diagram. With this done, we see at each step a set of states from our NFA occupied. Each state occupied corresponds to one branch of the computation, but we see them all at once on the diagram. The concept is the same, just with a simpler picture. For each symbol of our input string, we move all occupied states according to all of the corresponding transitions. If there are multiple transitions from a given state on a given symbol, we have a new picture of branching, a single occupied state splitting to occupy multiple states. This is the case on a B from the state at the left. If there are no transitions from a given state on a given symbol, the corresponding branch dies, no longer occupying that state. This is the case for the state at the right, which simply evaporates on a B. Let's run through the same input string, marking our occupied states. We start with just one branch, occupying the start state. For our first three A's, we only have one transition to follow, so this behaves just like a DFA. With our first B, our one branch splits to occupy two states, one for each B transition. Our next two A's rotate these occupied states around. And on our final B, one branch comes back to where it started, and the other splits into two, leaving us the three branches occupying three states. One of these branches ends at an accept state, so our NFA accepts the string AAABAAB. Before we move on, a quick aside about how epsilon transitions look. The idea is exactly the same as before, just representing branches by occupied states. We'll illustrate with our example of epsilon transition, starting with the start state. For any tail of an epsilon transition occupied by some branch, we immediately add a branch occupying the state at the head of the transition as well. So the occupied start state immediately branches to occupy the middle state as well, with no symbols read from the input. Iterating this until we're stable, the new branch also occupies the tail of an epsilon transition, so we immediately add a branch occupying the head of that transition. There are no more branches to add via epsilon transitions, so we're finished. 
As before, we process epsilon transitions immediately after occupying the start state, as well as after each time we update our set of states according to a symbol in the input string. Again, this achieves exactly the same effect as our branching did, but all on one diagram. It bears repeating that this trick of simply occupying multiple states in the NFA is possible only because the different branches differ only in the state occupied. We won't be so lucky with the other types of machines we'll see, and for them we'll have to return to our original perspective of cloning copies of a machine's configuration. So keep all that you've learned about branching in your back pocket for later, and remember that each occupied state in our diagram corresponds to a branch of the computation. The net effect with both NFAs is that everything that non-determinism allowed in terms of branching can be captured on a single diagram by occupying multiple states. But along the way, we've achieved something rather remarkable with our transitions. Given any set of occupied states, and any symbol from our alphabet sigma, we get exactly one new set of occupied states. Think about that for a second. This is exactly our condition for a deterministic finite automaton, but for sets of occupied states. This results in what's called the subset construction, which allows us to convert any NFA into a DFA that replicates its behavior. Let's outline this procedure illustrating with our example NFA. The set of states for our new DFA will be the power set of the set of states for our original NFA. In other words, the set of all subsets of our original set of states, whence the name subset construction. This set of states allows us to express any configuration of occupied states on our NFA, though some might never be reached for any input string. Our NFA had four states, so the DFA we construct will have two to the fourth, or 16 states. We'll mark these with dots to show which subset of the original states each one corresponds to. One for the empty set, four for the singletons, six for the doubletons, four for the tripletons, and one more for the set of all four states. Our start state is simply the singleton start state for our original NFA, plus any other states occupied after processing epsilon transitions. Each state of our new DFA contains some subset of the states of our original NFA. We declare any such subset containing an accept state of our original NFA as an accept state for our new DFA. Thinking back, this corresponds precisely to having a branch of our NFA computation that finishes on an accept state. Finally, we come to the transitions exactly one for each symbol of sigma for each state of our new DFA. Remember that our new automaton will be deterministic. Given a state of our new DFA, which is to say a set of states from our original NFA, and a symbol from sigma, we simply observe what our original NFA does to this set, follow all transitions from all branches, and then process any epsilon transitions. Whatever set of states results gives us the unique destination for the transition. This is going to get a bit messy, so let's just color code the transitions instead of labeling them. Gray for A and tan for B. Starting with the start state. On an A, the singleton at the top state will move to the right, giving us this subset of states. There are no transitions for B from the start state, so this will land us on the empty set of states. The empty set of states is always a sink. If we occupy no states, we have no branches. So no matter what symbol we see, we'll end up with no branches again. Our new state gets two transitions as well. On an A, the branch moves to the bottom spot, giving us this new subset. And as with the start state, a B gets us to the empty set. Now with this new state, on an A, the branch moves to the left spot, giving us a new subset. On a B, the branch stays put so we come back to the subset we came from. We'll go through one more state's transitions in detail. On an A, we move back to the subset consisting of the top state, and on a B, the two transitions give us a two-element subset. We do this for all 16 states, for each of the two letters of our alphabet, giving us 32 transitions in total. Here are the rest of the A transitions, along with the rest of the B transitions. Whoa, this is quite an intricate DFA to get from such a small NFA at the outset. Fortunately, this construction is only applied in theory. It's important to know how to do it so you know it can be done, but outside of the context of a class, you wouldn't actually do this. The key is that this construction shows that for every non-deterministic finite automaton, there is some deterministic finite automaton that accepts the same set. 
Let's watch both of these in action for the string AAABABA and observe how the new one models the old. The first three A's simply move us clockwise by three steps around the states for NFA, and the DFA moves correspondingly. Our first B results in two states being occupied, and the transition in our DFA moves accordingly. The next A moves these two occupied states clockwise by one step, which is captured by the corresponding transition of our DFA. The second B sees one branch dying and the other staying put, which again is captured by our DFA. And our final A moves one step clockwise, with the DFA following suit. The final set of states occupied doesn't include an accept state, so our DFA doesn't mark this set of states as an accept state. Both the NFA and the DFA reject the string AAABABA. In this way, the NFA and DFA will give the same result for any input string, because our DFA simply encodes the subsets of states occupied by the NFA, and how these change for each symbol read, with accept states in our DFA being precisely those whose sets include an accept state of the NFA. As a consequence, the language accepted by our new DFA is the same as the language accepted by our original NFA. The subset construction shows that every set accepted by an NFA is also accepted by some DFA, and thus is regular. Note that it's possible to have states in our new DFA that are inaccessible. That is, no matter what string we're given as input, we'll never reach those states. For this reason, there's no need to even have them in our DFA. We've never seen this happen before, though it could happen during the product construction, because up to this point, we've been the ones drawing NFAs, and why would we include states that are never used? But the subset construction just blindly creates a state for every subset, and it's possible that some of them, or even many, are inaccessible. If we wanted to, we could mark the start state of our DFA as accessible, and iteratively mark the states that we can arrive at via transitions from accessible states as also accessible, until stable. With the accessible states identified, we could then remove all inaccessible states without any effect on the operation of our DFA. Indeed, we'll have reason to do this very thing in the future. We could even complete both tasks at once by growing our DFA one subset at a time from the starting set of occupied states and adding transitions, either to new subsets or existing ones, until the DFA is complete. What we've just achieved bears repeating. Given an NFA, we saw the subset construction gives us a DFA accepting the same set. This tells us that NFAs are no more powerful than DFAs in terms of what sets can be accepted, or equivalently, what questions they can answer. This is perhaps a bit surprising. You might notice, however, that the number of states in the new DFA we construct will be 2 to the power of the number of states in our original NFA, and this is no trifling matter. A relatively tame NFA of 20 states would be converted into an equivalent DFA with over a million states. Raising 2 to the power of a number increases its size, literally, exponentially. However, the resulting DFA will still have a finite number of states, so at a theoretical level, an NFA still can't accept a set of strings that some DFA doesn't also accept. So saying that there exists an NFA accepting the set A is logically equivalent to saying there's a DFA accepting the set A. In particular, if we want to show a set as regular, we're free to use an NFA to accept the set instead of a DFA if we like. In this video, we've accomplished two things. First, we've learned how to represent all branches of an NFA computation at once by occupying multiple states on the diagram. But don't discard what you've learned so far about branching, because there will be no shortcuts when we get to models of computation more complicated than finite automata. Second, we've shown that NFAs are no more powerful than DFAs by constructing for any given NFA, a DFA that accepts the same set via the subset construction. Next, we use NFAs to show that products and asterisks of regular sets are regular, checking off two more boxes on our to-do list.